Uh, hi everyone and welcome back to this series of practice problems about DC uh, DC motors. Uh, so in this question here we have another shunt motor that is running at 700 RPM. So uh, the speed of this motor at what conditions? This is very important. When I give you the speed in the motor, you have to know this is given at what conditions. So this is given at no load conditions. And also it draws two amps and you can see here from the figure draws. This is the current that coming from the supply, which feeding both the armature and and the field, the field winding. We are given the armature and the field uh, resistance and we here we are giving the input power. What is the input power? P N of the motor is basically the V terminal times the is the current that comes from the supply and this is equal to four kilowatt what we want to find we want to find the speed at full load so we know the speed at no load we want to have the speed or to know the speed at full load the torque and efficiency at full load neglecting the iron we, we neglect the iron which is the core and the rotational losses so it means that the only losses that we need to take care of is the cover loss or the winding loss both the armature winding and the, the field winding okay so this is similar to the previous question question number two but here the input data are a bit different than the input data in the previous question okay so basically we want to come to this relationship, which is, or this is the starting point of these type of questions that we know that your uh, E, B, or the uh, induced or the back EMF or the induced voltage is proportional basically to the flux times the speed. That is the most important thing. So we want to see that uh, the voltage or the induced voltage is proportional as we know proportion to the flux time the speed we want to know which one is constant and which was changing definitely the speed is it changing is the flux changing or not so this is what we will see in this in this question and we want to find eb at different conditions at the no load and at the full load and we know that from applying kvl here that your eb generally speaking at any condition is equal to the terminal voltage which is basically constant here, doesn't change. It's, it's given to us as 110 volts and it doesn't change. Minus I A R A and definitely R A doesn't change. So the only thing that is changing. So basically here we want to find I A at the two different conditions. What is I A? We know that I A again applying KCL, this is from KCL, is equal to I S minus I field. So we want to know IA at different conditions. So let's start at the no load condition. And let's find the required IA and EB. Okay. So IS is given to us. So at no load, IS, no load is equal to two amps. How about IF? IF is fixed, it's constant, doesn't change. So IF is basically equal to the V terminal divided by R shunt or R field. Of course, these names R shunt, R field, uh, EB, AA, you will find it from textbook to textbook, they have different symbols. So you shouldn't be confused. This is equal to 110 uh, divided by 100, the resistance, when this gives us 1.1 amp. And from this, you can say that your IA at no load is equal to 2 minus 1.1, which is equal to 0.9. From this, I can find our EB at no load conditions, which is equal to VT, which is 110 minus the 0.9, the IA, okay, times RA, which is given to us as 0.6, and this gives us 109.46. So this is your EB at no load. Now, we want to find EB at full load. Again, EB, it doesn't matter. EB at no load, at full load. This is the governing question, equation. So VT is constant, R is constant. So IA, this is what we want to find. So what is your IS at full load? 
Now we are given here this information, the input power is four kilowatt. So at now full load condition. So at full load condition, what we have here, we have uh, IS, VT, and PN. So from this, we can find IS at full load condition, which is equal to uh, your PN divided by VT. The input power is 4,000 divided by 110. So this is give your IS at full load 36.3 amps. And as we noticed from the previous question, that is a huge jump in the current. And basically it will be the armature current because the field current is constant, doesn't change. This is the field current. So from this, you can find that your IA at full load, again, using the same KCL 36.3 minus the 1.1, we get, uh, we get 35.26 amp. So that is very similar to the previous question, the uh, huge increase in IA. And from this, we can find our EB. So your EB now at full load condition is equal to the VT, which is 110, minus the IA at full load, which is the 35.26, times your RA, which is the point six and this will give us the value of the voltage which is at or eb or the back emf 88.84 volt now as we said in the previous question here eb is proportional to the flux times in but the flux is constant because the flux comes from if and if is controlled by both the r shunt and the v terminal Neither of them has changed, so IF is basically doesn't change, flux doesn't change, so your EB is proportional to the speed only. This is the only variable. So you can write that the EB at full load divided by the EB at no load is equal to the speed at full load divided by the speed at no load. So the only unknown for us is the speed at full load. So this speed at full load condition is equal to the EB at full load, the 88.84, the one that we just found, times the no load speed, which is 700 RPM, divided by the EB at no load, which is 109.46. And this will give me the speed of 568.84. 13 RPM. So this is the first requirement, the speed at full load. Now we want to find the torque. Okay. And here we want to find the output torque. And to find the output torque, we need to find the output power. So your P out is equal to PN minus P losses. But in this question, we said ignore the iron and the rotational losses. So we will have only the I square loss. So we'll have the PN, which is the 4,000, minus the losses in the armature, which is the IA square, 35.26 square times the 0.6, and minus the IF square times R shunt, which is the 1.1 square times the 100, and this will give us a total uh, power, output power 31, 33.03 watt. So this is your output power. Once we know the output power, we can find the output torque. T out is equal to P out divided by omega. P out, we just found it, 33.03, divided by omega, which is the speed at full load. Remember, everything here we want to find at full load conditions, the torque, the speed. You have to use the data from the full load conditions. So this would become equal to 568.13. This is the full load speed, and we convert this to omega but by multiplying it by 2 pi over 60. And this would equal to 
0.66 newton meter finally what is the efficiency as we know it the efficiency is always b out over b n we know both of them this is 3133.03 divided by b out 4000 and multiply this by 100 to have it as a percentage so it is 78.3 percent motor efficiency is in this range usually in the 70 because of the high losses that we have in the in the motor 